What's going on everyone? This video is very basic but super important for new traders and investors and members of TradingView. So if you're new, stick around and buckle up. But if you are a, a TradingView pro, an experienced TradingView user, you may not have to watch this, although you may find some cool tips if you do stick around. So let's get right to it. Now, this video is all about your chart's time frame. How can you see the time that you want to see on your chart? How do you go back in time? How do you set up your chart to have the most perfect starting point and ending point? Well, the most obvious and easiest way to get started is when you open up your chart like this, all you have to do is click and hold and drag. As you drag your mouse, you are going to move the chart in the direction that you are dragging away from. In this case, we are dragging and pulling to the right on our mouse and it's moving our chart back in time. Now we are clicking, dragging and pushing to the left and it's bringing our chart closer to the future. And we can keep doing this all the way up into the point really all we see are future dates. Here you have uh, September and October, November. We're still at the time of this video all the way back in April. So click hold and drag and you can essentially go to any point in time on a chart of your choice. Now, another interesting tidbit to this is understanding the mouse wheel on your mouse or if you have a trackpad on a laptop, you can place two fingers on your chart and zoom out just by having two fingers on your chart and dragging those fingers upward. Or you can zoom in by placing two fingers on your trackpad and pulling downward to zoom in even more. So two fingers and we're pushing away, we're zooming out, now we're zooming in. If you have a mouse, use the mouse wheel to quickly zoom out or zoom in. Just roll that wheel to essentially get to a point on the chart that's perfect for you. Now, those are the first two quick tips and yes, you would be surprised at how many people actually don't know just how easy that is. So we hope this video solves for that problem right away. Next up, at the bottom of your chart, you're going to find these time frames down here and they are clickable, easy to use, and they adjust the chart for you automatically. Now you can probably already guess what this means. If you click one day, you're going to see one full day of trading. Here's the 9.30 a.m. open. This is Twitter after all, so New York stocks open at 9.30 a.m. And then of course here, the asset is trading through to this point now. And on a daily chart, it automatically snaps to one minute. That's because it can fit in one minute bars here or candles and you can get maximum amount of data and information on the chart. One minute candles all throughout this chart. If you click five days, well, you may notice it already adjusts now to five minutes. So you are looking at Twitter's, there's Twitter, the chart Twitter. You were looking at the price of Twitter since five days ago, March 31st. It's a five minute chart. It's automatically adjusted for you to compress as much pricing history as possible. Always keep in mind you can control this chart and visualize this chart however you please. It can be a line chart, a candlestick chart, whatever it is that you're interested in, just keep that in mind. Now we can click one month and the same thing happens. It's now compressed or it's showing us Twitter over the last one month and it's automatically adjusted to a 30 minute chart. Three months, same thing. Now we're looking at three months of price action. Six months, now we're looking at six months of price action. Year to date, now we're looking at the price of Twitter since the start of the year. Actually, one more tip here is YTD. What does that mean? That means year to date. Well, now some people might be asking, well, what does year to date mean? Year to date. Let's just quickly talk about year to date. Year to date means the starting point is the start of the year. We're just circling the start of the year. And to date, this is going to be today's date, which is here. So year to date, every time you click this button, it's going to set your chart up to the start of the year and then bring it through to its current price. YTD or year to date. This is a really effective tool if you're interested in comparing 
different assets. For example, click this plus. Now we can add maybe BTC USD. Let's do same percentage scale. And now we have Twitter, this black line, and Bitcoin, this orange line, on a year to date basis. So who is performing better this year? It's that simple to set up. Compare, click year to date. Now you can compare any asset in the world on a year to date basis with those two buttons. So we hope that's helpful and let's keep moving on here. We have one year. Yep, you guessed it. This is one year's worth of price action. Five years. Yep, you guessed it. This is five years with a price action. And then, of course, one of the more important buttons in this entire lower landscape here is the all button. Why is the all button so important? Well, you're going to get a complete price history of an asset. And that's really unique when you're looking to see the long term picture of something. You obviously want to be aware of where a symbol came from. What is its history? Where did it once trade? How much volume has occurred? This all button will do that for you rather quickly. It will show you the starting date of that asset, as much data as the TradingView platform has, and it will take you through to the current price. It's really truly going to give you the biggest picture of any symbol that you may have in mind. Now there is a little calendar button. This calendar button is really helpful and you can see there's a keyboard shortcut there as well. So you can use your keyboard to quickly use this as well. In this case, it's going to be option G or you can just simply click the calendar. Either is uh, available and it's just your preference. If you're really quick, go ahead and use option, option G to open up the go to button quickly. The go to button is incredibly important because you can now go to any date and time of your choice, specifically picked by you, curated by you, uh, essentially whatever it is that you need, it's in the starting date and the ending date, which falls into your hands. So why don't we jump right in? Let's type in 2015. Let's type in 12 for December 1st. Let's just do something random and do 2017 and do January 1st. So now we have December 1st, 2015 to January 1st. To, oh, let's make it a little more random. How about to January 5th, 2017? We click go to. And now the chart has created a chart with the time frame that we designed, that we specifically input into the go to custom range fields here. Start date, end date, go to. Let the chart do the rest. And always remember, when you do these things, you can then, of course, change the look and feel of the chart, zoom out, zoom in, perhaps go to a daily time interval, zoom out to get a little more acquainted with the exact time frame you wanted. It's all possible just by following these simple steps. So we hope that this helped you. And now we want to talk about a few quick things with your charts time frame. And that is sometimes you may find that uh, you've zoomed out, your charts sort of uh, chaotic. Now you have uh, you're you're at one time frame. The scales are are up and off the charts or to the left. You've been doing a ton of research. Well, this little auto button isn't is really important here. This is called auto scale. When you click auto scale, the chart is going to instantly scale back to a resolution that fits your screen perfectly. So we click on auto, and look what happened. The chart has adjusted itself. The scale has tightened up. And now you have a chart where all information is visible on the chart. But when you unselect auto, it's now sort of a freewheeling chart. You can essentially move the chart prices anywhere you want. You could even hide them if you wanted like this. But drag them up, and here they are again. Now we click auto, and it snaps back. And it makes zooming out and zooming in a lot easier. Pay attention closely here when auto is not selected. And we zoom out. You can kind of see the there are some candles that get lost. They are not auto scaling. That's why. So you can see the chart sort of uh, moving without any auto feature attached. It's not trying to make a perfect scale as we move. This is still a really important feature because some people prefer, believe it or not, to chart with even more control. They'd rather almost leave all of this open space open. They don't want the chart to scale because they want to keep in mind maybe 
where a symbol could go, just how low it could potentially go. So hold it like this. So now you might have some reminders here that, ah, that's right, this could go a lot lower. Or drag it down, and now you kind of have reminders of, that's right, this could go a lot higher. You could tighten the scale, essentially creating any type of look or feel that you want to this chart. But watch what happens when we click auto. It all snaps back. That's the auto scale feature. Really, really important and super helpful. Now, a few other tips about your chart's time frame. There is a clock. There is a time zone button at the bottom of your chart. You can click this clock to now control and change the time that you live in or need for your chart. We, of course, have New York selected right now because we are making this video from New York and we'd rather stay in our local time zone. But if you're in Chicago or Bogota or Mexico City, we can scroll down. There's Paris, Rome. All you have to do is click this time zone button, this little clock that's ticking here, and then change it to the time frame of your needs. So these, this is really important because obviously you're going to want to view your charts most likely in your local time so that you know exactly what's happening and how it relates to the time zone that you are in. So just this little clock here, go ahead and make sure you adjust this accordingly. Or it may so turn out that you live in, in Dublin, but you'd rather see your chart in New York time because maybe you're trading U.S. equities. Well, you can quickly adjust that. So you could be an international trader, but looking at, at equities listed in New York, and all you have to do is make sure this check is selected, and that's the time zone that you will have. If we even select uh, Vancouver, you can see here now the check is on Vancouver. Let's go back to New York and stick to that current time zone. A few other quick tips here. While you are working with your chart, keep in mind that this settings wheel down here is a really important tool for diving a little bit more into the price scale of your chart or the time scale. So as you're doing all of this movement, you're zooming out, you are looking at a one-year chart or a five-year chart, perhaps you're going to a specific date, perhaps you are moving more to the left and then zooming into a key point in time. Well, keep in mind that when you click the settings wheel, there are additional options here for you to ensure that your scales are also working just as you want them to work. So there's all sorts of unique things here that even uh, uh, involve inverting your scale, which would actually flip it completely upside down. There's a video about this invert scale on our YouTube page. Go ahead and make sure that you really dive into it. You can also even move the scales to the left, like so if you prefer that. Let's move it back to the right. And then, of course, there are some other little tips and tricks about actually showing what you really want to see. If you want to see a price line, if you want certain labels to show, we would encourage you, after you master just the simple movements of your chart, moving to the left, moving back in time, zooming in or zooming out, we would encourage you to definitely understand all of the settings that are now available to you here. Even something as simple as, reset, simple as resetting the price scale. This can be really effective if your price scale has sort of uh, warped itself or maybe you've made multiple changes or edits to it over time and you kind of want to return to a more normal default experience. Make sure you just click reset price scale to get back to a normal look and feel. So we hope this video helps you started, helps you get started and we really hope that it helps all the new traders, investors and TradingView members get a feel for how easy it is to control their charts and get the, the view that they want. And for all, all the advanced training view members, if you actually stuck around and watched this entire video, please uh, leave any questions or comments below or especially feedback. You may know something or have an idea that training view should build and we want to hear it. We're always trying to build and improve for you. So your feedback is always important. Also, we hope that maybe, just maybe, you learned something new in this video. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.